G'day everyone, it's Alan here from Fishing Mad. Now in a couple of weeks time, I'll be venturing off for a broom fishing trip away, which means that I'm currently loaded up full of all of my favorite broom fishing gear. And it's the perfect time to run you through an updated version of my favorite broom lures and soft plastics and techniques to get the most out of them. Now I'm gonna be running you through surface lures, crank lures, crab and yabby imitations, hard body lures, and soft plastics. And there's a lot to get through, so let's get started. So let's start with surface lures, and I've become fascinated with topwater fishing in recent times. That moment when a fish smashes a lure off the surface is an absolute thrill. Now in this space, the OSP Vent Minnow 76 has been a go-to for some time. Brim absolutely love them, but so do other species such as estuary perch, trout, whiting, tailor, and a lot more. These lures have a unique bent shape which creates an exaggerated swimming action. And that's why these lures are so effective. They're designed to mimic a wounded bait fish that's floating on the surface. And by adding some subtle twitches, you can make the lure dive ever so slightly straight into the strike zone. Now these lures are 76 millimeters and they weigh 4.3 grams, which means that they cast a fair way. And that allows you to cover great distances and test the area to see if there's any brim that are confident to come out of the structure that they're hiding in and hit something off the surface. The technique to fish these does take a little bit of getting used to, and I find they're worked best when you cast them out and leave them unworked for about 10 seconds, enough time for those ripples to disperse, then add some really quite aggressive twitches, make some noise and disturbance, let fish know that there's a lure in the area, and then follow that up with some pretty lengthy pauses. And that works really, really well when those pauses are over weed beds or any structure. Now when fishing with surface lures, stay alert for signs of fish. It could be a splash in the immediate area. It could be a gentle tap on your lure. It could be a fish that followed but didn't strike. And when you notice those things, just slow your retrieve right down, give the brim a chance to come back and have a look at the lure and maybe add a couple of subtle twitches to try and entice a strike. Now these lures come in a good range of colors. I've always been very fond of this pink and yellow version, which is called P74, and also a white pearl version, which is called P83. The big downside to these lures, however, is the cost, with most fishing retailers selling these for about $34 each, and it's for that reason that I've been very reluctant to buy these in big quantities. Now there are a few alternatives to the OSP Bet Minnow, including the Infeet Slippery Dog 65F from Diver, which has just been released on the market. Now these are a refreshed version of the previous Silver Wolf Slippery Dogs, and there's a few things that I do like about this lure, including the cost. Now $24, that's a lot cheaper than the OSP Bet Minnows but there's a few other things as well. Now the profile of these lures are obviously different to a bent minnow. These are 65 millimeters and weigh 3.8 grams. And I think that's a really nice size when you're targeting species like brim. I also really like that it comes with dual stinger hooks by default on the back section of the lure, which also works really well for other species like whiting. So these are pretty good alternatives to consider if you're into surface fishing. Okay, so let's move on to crank lures, which has been one of my absolute favorite types of brim lures now for many years. And my tackle box is generally chock full of these things. Now there's lots of different styles on the market, but they all have a lot of things in common. They've all got a very similar profile size, a very similar swimming action, and all a very similar color scheme. Now the Jackal Chubby has been around for a while now, but it's still one of my favorite lures. 
and at 38 millimeters and weighing 4.2 grams, it's slightly longer and heavier than most of the other cranks on the market. And what that does, it gives you a great casting distance. There's a fantastic swimming action on this thing. It's got really sharp trebles and brim respond really, really well, particularly to that brown suji color that I've got there. Now crank lures like these are great for fishing over sandy flats, for working them over weed beds, for rolling them along the edges or casting them deep into structure. And brim absolutely love them. Now you can mix up the retrieve, you can just do a continual slow roll or you can add in some twitches and pause and just see what's working for you on the day. So the plastic part on the end of your crank lure is called a bib. And typically that will come in three different sizes, shallow, medium, and deep. And that's going to determine how deep your crank lure is gonna to dive to when you work it. So this one here is a shallow bib, and that's gonna get you down to about one meter. This one here is a medium bib, and that's gonna get you down to about 1.5 meters. And this one here is a deep diving, which is gonna get you down to about two and a half meters. And all you need to do is work out the water system that you're fishing in the day and what depth you really wanna get that crank lure down to. So the Jackal Chubbies cost about $22 from most fishing retailers. And that's probably a bit more on the expensive side compared to other cranks on the market. So there are a few other good ones that you can have a look at. You've got the Atomic Hards Crank, which has been around for a while. They're very, very good. Um, you've also got that Cranker Cranks, which have also been around for a while and a really good option. And if you're after a good, cheaper alternative, these are the Savage Gear Fathead Cranks. So these are retail sometimes for around $13. Um, and I've got some videos specifically on using these lures and they catch a ton of brim. So go and check those out as well. Also have a look at the new Daiwa Infeet Rolling Cranks, which have just hit the market. And they replace the older Prezzo Cranks. These look fantastic. This is the new color, which is called Blue Suji. And at 32 millimeters and 3.6 grams, these cranks have a slightly smaller profile size than others on the market. They've been on the market now for a couple of weeks, so I haven't had a chance to really test them out thoroughly, but I'm really keen to see how they stack up against the Jackal Chubby. And they also cost $22, which makes them a really good comparative product. Okay, let's move on to crab and yabby imitations. And the Cranker Crab is in a class of its own. This was designed specifically for targeting brim and has been incredibly popular with tournament and recreational anglers now for several years. Now, I used to use the smaller 3.9 gram size crab, but recently what I have done is flipped across to the slightly bigger 5.9 gram crab. Now that is in that olive color, which is my favorite in the range. Um, and I found just by using the slightly bigger profile size, it's just been a little bit easier to cast. I can predict those sink rates a little bit easier. And I found that I've caught bigger size brim using the bigger crab. Now these lures are really well designed. That crab looks super realistic. It has a slow sinking action and the foam claws float above the crab's head like it's trying to defend itself, which is also handy to prevent the trebles from snagging up. Now these lures are reasonably durable, but you can buy replacement treble claws and plastic legs if you needed to. So these lures are worked best when you cast them deep into structure, which might be hard up against a bridge pylon, right next to a submerged tree, and they will sink very, very slowly. And then the trick is, is just to work them ever so slowly, sometimes painfully slowly when the brim are being quite finicky. Now these do retail for $24 at most fishing retail outlets. You might say that that's pricey, but you know what? There's no comparable product in this space and they are the king of crab imitations. Now, if you're after a cheap Yabby imitation soft plastic, then go and have a look at the Pro Lure Yabby or even the Savage Gear Manic Creature. So these will cost you about $10 a packet. They look realistic and the action on them is pretty good. So another option worth having a look at. Okay, let's move on to hard body lures. And that old twitch, twitch pause is as popular as it's ever been. And Brim love shallow diving hard body lures. 
that skinny profile, shiny flashy colors, which resembles a bait fish so well. It's a lightweight lure, which casts really well, but it's also liked by a lot of other species such as flathead, trevally, estuary perch, tailor, and a lot more. Now there are so many different hard body lures in this space, but the diver double clutch in shiny colors is still my go-to. Particularly in the colors of laser perch, kawamutu and laser au, which really do resemble a bait fish well. Now when brim fishing, there are two sizes of double clutches that I don't mind using. So firstly is the 60 millimeter double clutch. So this weighs 3.6 grams and dives down to 1.3 meters. And then there is the 75 millimeter double clutch, which weighs five grams and dives down to 1.5 meters. These lures are light, but they cast really well. And the trebles on the newer and revised double clutches are improved. Now these can be used in several different scenarios. You can cast them deep into structure and then work them slowly. You can work them along drop-offs. You can work them over weed beds. And typically, you're gonna be working them quite slowly with subtle down twitches and lengthy pauses. And it's often on those pauses that you will get the strike. Now these lures do cost $25 at most fishing retail outlets, which isn't cheap for a hard body style lure. That being said, they are incredibly popular and that price point obviously isn't scaring away consumers. Now another hard body lure that I've been using a lot lately is the Cranker Minnow, an Aussie design suspending lure, which has nice components and a really strong action. It's also got a really interesting color range and that hardy heady color is an absolute ripper. The lure has a 59 millimeter profile and comes as either a shallow diving version which is 3.5 grams and will get you down to one meter or a deep version, which is four grams and will get you down to about two meters deep. So these retail for $21, slightly cheaper than a double clutch, but another really good option to have a look at. Now, another good brim hard body lure to consider, especially if you're fishing land-based or large open waters is the revised tournament spike by Daiwa. Now these weigh five grams, so they cast an absolute mile and they allow you to cover really large distances. These lures dive down to about two meters deep and I've done really well land-based fishing with these around river mouths where the water depth is a little bit deeper. They're also really, really good for targeting other species such as trout. So these lures will set you back about $25 at most fishing retailers. And finally, let's go over soft plastics, which will still be the go-to choice for so many anglers out there. And why? Because they're significantly cheaper than all the lures that I've mentioned before. They're really easy to work and they are so effective at catching lots of brim. Now, when it comes to soft plastics for brim, the Z-Man two and a half inch grub is still the king in this space. Now, a lot of brands have tried to make their own variation of the two and a half inch grub, but so many resort to going back to the Z-Man two and a half inch grubs and for good reason. It's because of that elastic material that these plastics are so easy to rig up. They're super durable and they have a great swimming action with a strong fluttering tail. And there's an extensive color range. My three favorites are Midnight Oil, the old favorite Motor Oil, and Chartreuse Sparkle. Now these work best with a fast tapered rod so you can feel all of those bites and inquiries fished with the rod tip pointing down. You can mix up the retrieve with lifts and pauses or even just slow rolling them in open water or deep into structure. I find these soft plastics are most effective when rigged up on a HWS jig head. And I generally will start with a 1 16th or a 1 20th and then go either heavier or lighter depending on the conditions that I'm fishing on the day. Now at $11 per packet, which includes eight soft plastics, you just cannot go wrong with the Z-Man grubs. Now some alternatives to the Z-Man grub would include the Berkeley Power Bait Grub and also the Daiwa Bait Junkie Grubs, which have a equally good swimming action and color range. These plastics are made from that soft jelly-like substance Elastomax material. And I've used these plastics a lot lately and they catch plenty of brim. 
Now, when you compare them with the Z-Mans, I find that the tail occasionally sticks to the body of the soft plastic, which takes away the swimming action. I've also found they're not quite as durable, and because they're so soft, they can be a little bit tricky to rig up. Now, that is getting quite picky, but however, on the positives, they are centered, and they are also biodegradable, which is a massive advantage. They also have a great swimming action and an extensive color range, and these are some of my favorites in coiling that oily UV flash and black UV. And finally, one of my absolute favorite brim soft plastics is the Z-Man two and a half inch Slim Swims. Now these would have to be probably the most basic and simple soft plastic design that you'll ever come across, but Brim absolutely love them because they mimic a bait fish so well and that paddle tail has such a wonderful and strong action. Now this was my go-to Brim soft plastic for quite a while there because it was no fuss, it was simple to rig up, it was cheap and it just caught so many fish. This plastic, very much like the two and a half inch grub, I find a worked best on a HWS jig head. It allows the paddle tail to move freely and not get tangled up in weedy areas. It also has a great color range. They're super durable, they're super simple, and at $10 per packet, they are a fantastic option. Again, there are some good alternatives here as well. You've got the Hurricane Sprat 65, you've got the Daiwa Bait Junkie 2.5 inch minnow, there's also the Kitec 3 inch swing impact worm. And if you really wanted to, you could even give the old favorite a Berkeley 4 inch turtleback worm a go. Thanks for sticking with us. I know that was a lot to get through and hopefully you found some helpful options and some helpful tips amongst all the soft plastics and hard bodies that we've gone through already. Now I know in the brim sector, there are so many options when it comes to brim lures and plastics. And obviously I haven't covered everything, they are just my favorites at the moment. So let me know in the comments what you're using and things that you would recommend for others. Anyway, guys, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It does help greatly. And until next time, good fishing, everyone.